Today, I'm going to show you how to use Generative Fill in Photoshop to change your photos from day to night. We're only using Generative Fill, only AI, so let's get started. Welcome back to Brush and Overlay Cafe. We are going to use Generative Fill to turn this photo from day to night, but I'm also going to share some tips and tricks for how to do some of these edits manually if you just can't seem to get it right in Generative Fill. Here's the image I'll be using. You can download it in the description if you'd like to follow along and practice. I'm going to start with duplicating my background. We're going to start from the top down. So I'm going to start by creating a night sky. To do this, I'm going to just do a quick selection of the existing sky. And then up here, I'll click on generative fill, type in what I want. So I'm typing in night sky with stars and moon and clouds and click generate. So you should be as descriptive as possible to be clear that this needs to be a night sky, not a daytime sky. You can see I got the same daytime sky with the stars and moon and clouds added. And the reason this happened is because generative fill sometimes struggles with context, especially when it's interpreting changes from one extreme like daytime to another like nighttime. So to get better results in a situation like this, you can actually just trick Photoshop into thinking that it's nighttime. So to do that, I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer and I'm just going to bring down the midtones and highlights. I'm not going for perfection here. I just want it to look somewhat like it's nighttime so that the tool won't get confused. From here, I'm going to create a stamp visible layer with Control Alt Shift E. And now I'm going to make my selection again. This time I'm using the pen tool. If you do that, make sure you then right click and choose make selection and click OK. All right, so I've got my selection again. I'm going to type in dark starry sky, stars visible, no daylight. Lots of detail. And let's see what we get. Okay, so this time we did get a beautiful night sky. We've got one, two, three night skies. There's an obvious problem though. You can see that dark outline around the buildings. Now, if I click on the mask and select the backslash, you can see everything that's red is not selected. Everything else is selected, including those edges of the building, which we don't want. So with the mask selected, you'll want to come over here and click on select and mask. And then scroll down to feather and just play with the feathering until it looks right. That looks good. Click OK and there's a before and after. You can see that it also brought some of that darkness down onto the buildings, which is perfect. Now let's say you just couldn't get it to look right in generative fill. That's fine. No need to use generative fill. You can just go to edit and scroll down to sky replacement. Click the drop down. And you'll see a couple folders with different types of skies. If you want to add more skies, come up here and click on the drop down and choose get more skies. Now you can either import your own skies or download some free ones. So under spectacular, I'm going to just scroll down and I think this sky will work in this image. Turn the preview back on. Now we've got a move tool up top. So you are free to move the sky around as needed. You also have the brush, a hand tool to move it around, and of course, zoom in and out. The most important feature is color adjustment. This will help you adjust the color of the rest of your image to that of the sky. So obviously in real life, the sky is going to cast a certain color. So you can turn color adjustment up or down. Here's what it looks like all the way down. And here's what it would look like turned all the way up. I think I'm going to set it around 35. I don't want it to be too strong. And I think that looks good. Down here, you're going to want to choose output to new layers. By doing that, every single adjustment that was necessary to put the sky in is here here on its own layer. So you can click the sky itself on and off, any lighting adjustments, the foreground lighting in the sky, etc. And it's all neatly packaged in one single sky folder. A quick adjustment. Next, I'm going to use generative fill to make the lamps look like they're glowing. But there's a secret to this. I'm going to click on the duplicate of my background layer. So what most people might do is you'd probably just select a general area around the lamp where you want it to look like it's glowing down onto the sidewalk. So I'm just going to take a general selection, click generate, and I'll just type in glowing lamp and then hit generate. I can almost guarantee that this is going to create an entirely different lamp, which is not what I want. I'm hoping to just keep my 
original lamp, but I'm positive that's not going to happen. And most likely, even if it is glowing, it's not going to look right. Okay, so there's option one. Not too terrible, but again, it's a different lamp. Options two and three are different lamps that aren't even glowing. It didn't give me at all what I wanted, right? So there's two reasons for that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. First of all, the shape that I drew was very uh, just kind of random. And there's no way that Photoshop could have used that shape to understand what I really wanted. So shape is very important when you're using generative of fill. The other thing is I typed in glowing lamp. So Photoshop looked at the word lamp and assuming I want to generate a lamp, it did just that. It generated a brand new lamp. What I should have done instead is I'm going to select the actual lamp that's here because that's what I want to be filled in. Now Photoshop will fill in only what's inside for sure nothing that's outside of my selection. The problem is it'll fill in maybe all of what's inside the selection, but not necessarily. It might just fill in a little bit of it. So what I'm going to do is expand the selection. So I'm going to go to select, modify, expand, and I'll expand that by about five pixels because I can always mask off any extra, but I'm trying to get generative fill to fill in that entire area of the lamp with a glowing effect. Next, I'll describe what I want this area to look like. Instead of glowing lamp, I'm just going to type in glowing. Click generate. See how much better that is? Here's one, two, and three. I got to keep my own original lamp and now it looks like it's glowing. Now here's another little trick. You can delete the ones that you know you're not gonna use. There's a little garbage can in the bottom right hand corner. That'll help keep your file size smaller. If I didn't like my results and I wanted to generate some more, I could just come right back up here and click generate again. Now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see we've got all this blue around the lamp and let me hide the underneath layers. That's because this is just a picture that Photoshop laid over top of my original. So all of this blue is part of the generated scene. I'm just gonna control T to make the picture of the lamp a little bit bigger to cover that up. And then I'm gonna use the eraser tool. Oops, I have to rasterize this first because it's a smart object. So now I'm going to use the eraser tool to just get rid of any areas that I don't need that might get in the way and look kind of weird. So if I uncover the underneath layers again, I'm going to continue with my erase tool just to get rid of anything that looks wonky. In a bit, I'll also show you how to make that glow reach the sidewalk as well. It's important to know how to do these things both with AI like we just did and also manually. So manually, I'm going to use a gradient to create even more of a glow. So on a new layer, I'm going to select my gradient tool and under basics, I've chosen color to transparent. I've selected this orange color. I'm just going to click inside and drag. Now you'll notice because this is this layer is under the sky layer. It's not covering everything, so I'm gonna pull it all the way up to the top. Now I've got the diamond gradient selected, and so now I can see in real time what this is gonna look like. If you wanna change the color inside, just double click and you can change it to anything you want. You can do the same with the outside color, so you can create whatever sort of gradient you want. Now it might look kinda of weird right now, but watch what happens when I change my color mode to color dodge, or my blending mode, sorry. Now it looks like a real glow. I'm just going to resize to fit, click in here to move it, and there we go. There's a before and after of just that extra layer. I can easily copy this onto the other lamp back there by clicking Control J, convert this layer to a smart object, Control T, and I'm going to move it down to the other lamp and resize to fit. This is a method you could easily use instead of generative fill if you're just not getting the results that you want out of generative fill. It's also great to use alongside generative fill like I did here. Next up, let's make these windows look like they're glowing. I'm going to use the pen tool for this. P for pen. In this case, the shape I'm selecting is the same as the shape of a window, so I might be able to just get away with typing in what I want the selection to look like and nothing else. So I'll try just telling that area to glow in generative fill. I'm going to right click inside and choose make selection. So now the area I outlined with the pen tool is a selection. I'm going to click generative fill and just type in glowing. So there's option one. Two, that looks a little weird. And three, I like option one. It looks very natural because that's exactly how it would look. Some lights would be on, 
others would be off. I'm gonna do the same thing, P for the pen tool, and outline my next set of windows. Right click and choose Make Selection. Again, glowing and hit Generate. And we've got one, two, three more perfect options. I'm gonna choose option number three. Now a good rule of thumb, generally speaking, when you're using generative fill is you do want to name your object, so in this case windows, and describe that object. In this case, I'm gonna describe it as glowing. Shape is super important when you're using generative fill. That's the first thing it's gonna look at. Sometimes just the shape is enough, but the majority of the time your best result is gonna come from giving generative fill a word and then describing that word. So that's what I'm doing for the rest of these windows. I'm using the prompt windows glowing. And if for any reason you're not able to get the desired result from generative fill, you can just go right back to using the gradient tool like we did to create the glowing in the lamp. The exact same process. In fact, I'm gonna do that on some of these windows as well as some of the headlights down on the street. I'm gonna stamp visible again, control alt shift E, and then just do a quick selection around the street and type in dark street at night. So generative fill gave us one good option. Uh, two and three aren't so great, but option number one got us much closer. So you could just continue doing it that way, or if you wanted to do this manually, you could just use a curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on the hand and click where I want to lower the light and lower it down. I'm also going to bring up the blues and that's a little too purple. Blue and red make purple. So I'm going to bring down the reds as well and then invert my layer mask and just paint that in only where I want it. You don't really even have to be too exact because those same colors and tones are going to reflect onto the person. Obviously this is too purple again, but I can always go back in and change it, make any adjustments. I need to. It's too saturated so I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer and just turn that saturation down a little bit. Make sure I do a clipping mask. I'll turn the light down a little as well and then there's a few spots I missed so I'll just paint those right back in on my curves adjustment layer. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to paint that curves layer in these highlighted areas of the street and don't forget the reflections as well. Now I'm going to show you a cool way to create the reflection from the lamp on the sidewalk. So I'm going to click Q for quick mask, grab my brush tool and just brush the area that I want the reflection or not the reflection but like a glow, a soft glow from that lamp. And when I let go and hit Q again, that area becomes a selection. So I'm going to type in sidewalk with a soft glow and click generate. So here we've got what looks like light, natural light that may or may not be coming from the lamp. This one does actually look good. It follows the light pattern on the sidewalk. So I could just keep that or click generate again if I didn't like that. I'm looking more for an actual colored glow from the lamp. So I'm going to show you also how to do this manually. And the nice thing is we can do it the same way that we did all the other glows manually. So again, I'm just going to use the gradient tool. Right now I've got the star gradient selected. I might change that, but I'm simply going to click and drag where I want this soft warm glow to be. I am going to switch to the radial gradient and then again, I'm going to change my blending mode to color dodge. Now I'll tell you one more little secret about this. You'll want to turn down the fill. There's a difference between turning down fill and turning down opacity. Opacity is just going to give you kind of a muddy result, but turning down fill will make sure that the highlights from that glow stay in the highlights of the image. So the shadows aren't going to be discolored like they would be if you just turn the opacity down. Now a few final touches to make this look more cohesive. I'm going to come down here and choose color lookup. In the drop down, choose night from day. I'm going to turn the fill down to about 40%. Next, I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer and just bring the highlights up a bit and the midtones down. One final thing, I want to create a white gradient on these headlights. So I'm going to switch that to white, click and drag. Here's another tip, Control H will hide that. Now I'm going to change my blending mode again to color dodge, do another gradient on this headlight, again, color dodge, and if I want to make any more adjustments, Control H again will bring my adjustment for the gradient back, Control H to hide. I'm going to mask my color lookup from her face and a little bit from the shoulder. I hope this video was helpful. 
If it was, please remember to like and subscribe for more Photoshop and AI tutorials. Stay tuned for that.